All right, hello everyone, Do It Right Tech coming at you, and this is not a review. This is some tech tips. So, what we're going to be talking about is, have you ever woken up and your desktop or laptop, whatever it is, it is not turning on? Because maybe it Windows 10 decided to, you know, give yourself a little bit of a random update there during the night, or you know, your computer just decided to shut down randomly after your two week trip and now you push the power button, nothing, all right? Or you push the power button and it goes into the BIOS. Well, here is three things and maybe some bonuses that can help you figure out why your desktop, laptop, PC essentially is not turning on. So let's get right into it. All right, so first of all, you got your PC down on the floor. It's all right here. So first of all, you're gonna wanna find these little side screws, these little mounting brackets right there, and you'll want to take them out. As you can see, this is a thumb, or you can use a simple Phillips head. Now, some of these do just require a Phillips head. They're literally just a Phillips head screw, so you'll want to just do that. But once you've gotten them out completely, like that, now, you can just simply pull that and out. So, like that. So now, as you can see, you have access to all your innards. So basically, you're doing surgery on your computer. So essentially, the first thing you'll want to do, of course, is uh, <laughs> make sure your power is unplugged before you do this, which, of course, mine is. Your power supply is unplugged, or if you're working with a laptop, you want to unplug everything, unscrew, and unplug the battery, which can be quite difficult on those. So please refer to a guide on that, as all, really all uh, laptops are different. So as you can see, our power supply is unplugged, so we got no power. I always like to just come around here and, you know, just press the power button over there. I've already done it, but probably want to press it for 10 seconds so that way you're all empty and there's no electricity running through the build. You also want to ground yourself. Uh, I generally do wear a harness around my arm, but since I don't have one today, generally try to not make a lot of static, don't wear socks, and sort of like ground yourself on some metal back there. So once you've done that, now you're all free to access your computer all right, so here we are at the rig. We have zoomed in and you'll see this little silver piece right there, which I focused on. That is your CMOS battery. And what that little guy is responsible for is he is responsible for keeping your BIOS up to date. Every time you run out of power, you unplug your PC or whatever, this little guy right there is what keeps your date and time. So if you unplugged it, your date and time would be gone. So you need to reset that. Now on some computers, if your CMOS goes bad, which is generally about five, six years, it's a lithium battery, just a little button cell. It's nothing special. You can go buy it at your Home Depot or whatever your uh, batteries place is, off of Amazon or whatever. Uh, you'll basically want to just unplug this guy and really you can do it with a flathead screwdriver or a knife. I'm not gonna do it on this one, but it's simple, you just unplug it by via a flathead screwdriver, and you'll see this is the positive part right here. As you can see, there's a little positive sign right up there. The bottom will be a negative, and it'll be unplugged, and you can just pop it out and pop a new one in. Now, the type is a CR2032. So it may be different on your motherboard depending on how. I'm pretty sure they're all universal, but it doesn't matter what battery. You don't need to go searching up CMOS battery, you know. It's just a simple lithium battery. But one of those things that's really important is this can be the main cause of your computer not booting up. If you had your computer for a long time, I'd recommend checking that. Now, with it, it can either cause you to be losing your uh, current date and time, that's a very big symptom, or it will completely not let your system post. It will not even turn on. I've seen on a couple computers some Dells and HPs that I've worked on, and I've worked on quite a few, and I know what I'm talking about here, is that this little battery will completely make your system rendered useless. It will not boot up. It may boot into the BIOS, but even from there you cannot boot it will boot up in essentially a safe mode, sort of to 
the motherboard and it will just boot up in the BIOS. And it may not even boot up in the BIOS. On this motherboard, it will actually boot. It'll require you to press, I believe, F11 on this. And then you can boot up, but it'll give you a little warning or something saying that your CMOS needs to be replaced. So this is what a CMOS is, CMOS battery. So that little guy right there is a cause of a lot of problems. So now that we have step one done, there's my one. <laughs> Let's look at step two, which is these are all in the computer. You know, it's not going to be anywhere else because, you know, anywhere else. Well, you can't really go anywhere else <laughs> in the software parts of the computer unless it's the BIOS. If you can access the BIOS, I'd recommend, and this isn't going to count as one, this is a little bonus, I'd recommend you go inside the BIOS and please refer to your motherboard manual if your PC is a custom PC like this guy, or if your PC is made by pre-built like HP, Dell, Lenovo, ThinkPad, well, that's by Lenovo. <laughs> uh, I'd recommend going into their uh, owner's manual and you can find which key it is. For this one, it's F8. You just really either spam the button really hard or hold it down. Either one works for me. Uh, and then you have access to the BIOS. From there, it's quite diff different for all uh, motherboard manufacturers. Uh, but essentially you want to find your boot device and make sure that that's reading. You also want to look at um, your CPU, see if that's good, and your RAM, which we are going to talk about next. So let's take a look at the RAM right now. All right, so I'm now looking the PC basically upside down, essentially. And here we have two modules. Now you may have four, you may have two, you may have one. <laughs> Generally you want to stick with two, four ratio. Uh, and you may even have another set of RAM module slots, DIMM slots, on the right side of the CPU, which you can't see, but uh, that's for really higher class motherboard, server class, and higher class. But generally what you want to check out is the RAM actually is one of the big things that can cause your uh, whole system to fail booting. So generally what you want to do is, as you can see, we have some Corsair RAM, is you want to stick your hand in here and locate, there'll be little snippy things, as you can see on this empty dim, the light's really bad, but as you can see on this empty dim right here, there's a little clip down there, which I just opened. And I can simply just close it as well with my finger and like that. But as you can see, there's a little clip right there. So once there's one on the other side, once you clip that out, you can, if I can see it, it's difficult. And there's a wire in the way. <laughs> there we go. All right, there, once you've unclipped those, you can now remove your RAM stick. All right, and now why am I saying you want to remove your nice RAM? Good grief, that just focused terribly. Sorry, guys. Why would you want to remove your nice Vengeance LPX DDR4 RAM with nice, you know, black frame and heatsink? Anyways, <laughs> why would you want to remove it? Well, the, que the answer is these can sometimes go bad. Now, it may not often go bad. You know, it may be something like the motherboard may have communication issues uh, with it. It may get some dust. I've seen that before. There have been dust inside the slots down there, which affect these being red. So in turn, a RAM stick can actually make your whole PC freak out and not boot. Now, some it can just happen where your PC doesn't uh, recognize the RAM. So I have 16 gigs in this guy. Uh, for example, oops, <laughs> don't want to ding that. For example, uh, I have 16 gigs. If one of these went bad, I'd only have eight. So it may split it in half or how many how many RAM sticks you have and may split it by that. Um, generally speaking, uh, it will still let your PC boot, boot, but if this is the case, for your second thing, I'd recommend checking the RAM. And you can do that by simply swapping them out. The first one you can take out, like this one, and then boot it up with 
that one in there, which as you can see in there, that one. And if that one doesn't work, then you can take that one out and plug in this one. You don't want to add, take both of them out at the same time because, well, you'll just end up booting into the BIOS because there's no RAM, it can't boot up Windows. <laughs> So you'll want to see that. If it does happen to be that, the best thing you can do is just throw this RAM stick in the garbage. You know, it's just is what it is, which is what happened on my PC one time. I actually, believe it or not, uh, had the RAM stick and had them plugged in and I somehow messed them up and... Uh, it turns out I replaced the whole motherboard and I was still having problems. So I thought the motherboard that they sent me was faulty. It turned out that they sent me a third one, that company, and it turned out that the RAM was bad the whole time. And that's why it wasn't booting. So big, big, big importance. Check your RAM. So, so finally, once you're done with all that, you want to make sure this isn't a PC building tutorial, but you just want to make sure that, you know, you have your RAM sticks lined up and you have that little slot right there lined up with the slot in there. And then you want to put it back in the DIM that you pulled it out from. So since my DIM was in DIM 4, you want to put it back in DIM 4. If you put it back in a different DIM, it's not going to necessarily mess it up, but you know, it could potentially lose performance because, you know, they're not functioning as a pair. You're losing bandwidth. But anyways, once you do that, just push them in and you hear that snap. That's these little clips again, as I was talking about initiating and they've snapped it. So let's look at our third last thing, which is on my recommended list to check out and see why your PC may not be booting for the third reason. So let's go take a look. All right, so no, it's not my terrible rat's nest of cables that is preventing a computer from booting. I know, don't, don't worry about this. I'm gonna take care of it, probably because this case really sucks at uh, cable management. But anyways, not me, I'm pro at cable management. But anyways, so we have an SSD, which is our OS drive, and our one terabyte hard drive, which houses, our YouTube videos, all the junk that we want. Videos, pictures, whatever we want. Video games, all right? So essentially you wanna check these. Essentially, I keep using essentially. Basically, let's use that word, hey? Basically, you shouldn't worry about the secondary drive. That wouldn't cause the issue. You just boot into Windows and say, well, there goes my terabyte. What happened to that? There's no terabyte of storage anymore. But uh, generally that can not hold your thing. You wanna check your SSD, which can be simply removed by just pulling this slot out, as you can see there. I don't wanna unplug it because I have to reopen the second panel back there. But basically you just pull it out. There's some wires back there and you can take a look at the SSD. There's really nothing much you can do with the SSD our hard drive, once it's corrupt, it's gone. You can maybe send it back to a uh, data recovery center and they can see if they can, you know, recover the data from it. But basically if an SSD or hard drive has gone bad, it's bad, you know, there's really nothing much you can do. Uh, the only thing else you could do possibly is, well, First of all, diagnose it, see if any of your cables have become loose, if the SSD drives are all good. As you can see in there, we have our SATA drives, make sure those are all plugged in. Make sure if it boots into the BIOS, make sure that the BIOS somehow didn't get uh, messed up and it's saying that it's now set the main drive for boot drives is set to your secondary drive and is trying to boot off of a YouTube video or something. <laughs> uh, but Take a look at the SSD, make sure it's all plugged in. And as far as that really, uh, trying a different hard drive or SSD or whatever with an operating system or plug in a USB and see if you can install Windows on like a, a little 540 RPM, I mean 5400 RPM hard drive like I have one laying around here and see if it boots from that. But that would probably be your last resort. Do not try 
to open the hard drive or SSD up. It's, you cannot work on it. I've tried it, don't try it. It'll just end up in ruining your whole rig. So don't do that. Luckily it was not on a actual important hard drive. It was just study purposes. <laughs> so now for the bonus one of those three. So, all right, here we are looking at a gamer's heart. This is the precious GPU of beauty. All right, it's an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070. Now I'm not doing a review on my PC again, but really the gamer's heart, the GPU can go bad. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna unplug it and see if the GPU is bad. Because if your computer is booting, the fans are whirring, your CPU is whirring, your hard drives and SSDs are rumbling, then your GPU may be bad and you're not getting signal to your monitor. Your computer may be booting, but you can't even see what is showing. <laughs> so uh, first of all, what I'd recommend is basically unplug this. Essentially, all you have to do is go to the back right here, or depending on what type of rig you have, go to the back in here, and you'll find one screw. Once you remove the panel back here, there's some brackets, as you can see right there, look like cheese graters. Once you remove those, you can pull the graphics card out of its PCI slot. There's one right down there, as you can see. Once you've done that, you can pull the graphics card out, which I just said. <laughs> and then once you've done that, you can go ahead and plug your HDMI VGA, if you're using VGA, or uh, DisplayPort, or whatever you're using, DVI. All right, S-Video. <laughs> I'm pretty sure no motherboards have S-Video now. But anyways, once you do that, you'll want to turn your computer around so let's see if I can turn the computer around and uh, you want to plug, uh, good grief this thing is heavy, you want to plug into the DVI or the HDMI on your I.O. on the motherboard. So once you do that, this is a pain in the butt to hold like that, okay there we go. Once you do that, uh, you can see if it boots from there. But don't try it with just having your uh, your little GPU plugged into the PCI slot, PCIe, excuse me, good grief, we're not in 2000. Uh, you'll want to unplug it from the slot so that way it will realize to display video to this because by default, it's gotta be going through this because once you boot off of your motherboard's uh, video, you'll be running off of integrated graphics off of your CPU. If your CPU doesn't have integrated graphics, basically you're sold down the river. These ports won't work anyways because you don't have a graphics chip, essentially chip, which is the integrated graphics in your CPU. So you can't boot off of, you can't pr process video through these to your um, uh, monitor. So you, in that case, <clears throat> need to go buy another one of these. Now I'd recommend buy a $10 one, $5 one off of eBay. It doesn't have to be that special. Go get yourself like a ATI Radeon graphics card. In fact, let me see if I have one. Yeah, 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 here we go. Yeah, here we go. Just go buy one of these. <laughs> An ATI Radeon graphics card that was from like 2008. This thing has like, 256 megabytes of storage, so uh, this thing is worth like $5. I've probably broken it already because I threw it down some stairs, but <laughs> and I've taken it many places. Uh, but essentially, it just, again, plugs into your PCIe slot. It's got the slots right there. And as you can see, this thing is so modern from 2008. DisplayPort and HDMI. That is one impressive I.O. system. But anyways, just plonk that guy in there. Go clabonk. And then you'll have them installed and you'll see if your graphics card has failed. Really, it's just a trial and error. You want to check quite a few things. So let's start from the beginning. So we got our 
What is it? Let's see if we can figure it out. I'm gonna give you one second. All right, so <laughs> anyways, you got your CMOS battery. So you wanna check your CMOS battery. That's generally one of the causes for many computer failures for booting in older rigs. If your rig is fairly new, it's possible that it could have failed, but mm, no, those things last way longer. It could have been a lemon, but no. Generally, if your rig is newer, I'd recommend secondly, going to check your RAM. So your RAM is located over behind the CPU here, uh, this behemoth of a cooler master fan. And you'll wanna just, you know, unplug it, plug it back in, see if it works. And then finally, you wanna check your little SSDs and hard drives, which are over there. There they are. You wanna check those boys and see if they're working. And finally, you'll want to check your lovely graphics card and see if it's got the dreaded death of no video input. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh yeah, and you can check and see if the CPU is fried, which it shouldn't be really, <laughs> unless you overclock the heck out of it. But <laughs> uh, that's for you special guys who do that. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this really helped you to figure out why your system isn't booting. Another tip is you could also just quickly check your power supply and just see if it's running. You can just throw in a little voltometer and see if you're receiving the correct watts and volts from your leads into the motherboard over there or if your graphics cards gain the correct power. Uh, really it's just trial and error. Your um, power supply really shouldn't fail unless it's pretty old, which I haven't seen a lot fail. I've only seen one fail in my entire uh, history of working on these, but generally these power supplies are pretty nice. They do not fail, uh, especially this is a nice EVGA 80 plus bronze. They're reliable now. An older one, like an old Dell 2008 Vostro that I had, uh, that one was on the fritz. It somehow still worked, but it sort of was, you know, in and out, in and out. It didn't supply the correct power usage, power plan. <laughs> so I just threw in a new EVGA silver one. So you can also check that one. But it's really just a trial and error. Again, I'd really recommend you check the CMOS if you're doing this for, you know, an older CPU. An older CPU, what am I talking about? Older PC, older PC. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.